All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode of No One's Impressed. This is episode 27. I am Vlad Levitt. Hopefully everyone is doing fine. I, uh, I cut off my beard the other day, which happens every now and then. You know, I'm trying to fix it. I miss a spot and I just go with Britney, bitch, and just shave the whole thing off and always immediately regret it. It's a vicious cycle. I uh, also gave myself a, a haircut the other day, which was one of the most terrifying experiences I've had in a little while. Right, I was starting to have a little, uh, what's it called, a little mullet situation happening in the back. And I'm like, I can either embrace it and start, you know, to learn to live with it. Or I can uh, try to fix it myself. And honestly, you need extra confidence to have a mullet, which I don't know if I'm there yet. Right, Riff Raff. Theo Vaughn, there's a personality that comes with uh, having a mullet. And I don't think I'm there yet. Right, maybe one day, but this time I was like, the lesser of two evils, I'll give myself a little touch up. And right away, I just gave myself like reverse bangs. You know what I mean? Just like a sharp line in the back. Right? Up front, it's like, uh, you know, stylish in the front. Priest in the back. You know, those monks, you know, that have like a full-on bowl cut. Like, that's what was happening in the back. And I knew that I was supposed to, like, give it a flick. Right? When you shave in the back, when you pass, you know, do the clipper. Right? Because I, I wasn't going to be stupid. I informed myself. I watched some YouTube videos. You know, but you don't have that touch, right? So right away, just gave myself like a half bowl cut. And uh, I ended up fixing it a little bit, you know? But uh, that's when I realized, man, when I go to like a hairstylist, I'm not just paying for a haircut. I'm paying for peace of mind. Because if I had to do this every time... I don't know, maybe I would get good at it, but I would lose a year or two because of the stress, you know? It's just too much. Man, I was even at the store the other day, and uh, I saw this guy who looked way too clean. Like, his haircut was way too sharp. And I almost asked him, like, hey, buddy, where uh, where'd you get that cut? All right? How about uh, how about you share some of uh, some of that information? You know, some of us need a little touch up. Guy would have been like, "What?" And I'm like, "I'm just saying, man. You know, if you got a guy, you know, and you're willing to share, help him out. You know, give him a little bit more more business. Right? I would be a, I would be a willing participant. Guy would be like, "Are you a copper?" I'll be like, nah, man. Just a boy trying to look clean, bro. How crazy is that? That haircuts are not allowed now by the government. Right, just a few years ago, right? If I told someone, hey, by the way, in a couple of years, uh, you could buy weed from the government and haircuts are going to be illegal? Nobody would believe that. But we're here. It's happening. This is the point we've gotten to. I know we're all doing our best trying to trying to manage, right? Despite the situation, I've gotten really productive in the past few days. I don't know what happened, but I started to get pumped again. I'm uh, I'm working on a new podcast, a weekly thing that's going to be happening, right? Because when uh, your first thing doesn't take off, right, you just start a second one, right? Clearly, when it comes to YouTube, I'm not going for quality, I'm going for quantity here, 
right? Like I want to get to a point where I'm just all of YouTube. Just take over. No matter what you look up, you're like, fuck this guy again? It's YouTube. Like, okay, I'm just going to YouTube Ethiopia. And it's just me on a thumbnail, thumbnail like, hey, I just went to Ethiopia. Like a travel vlog. You're like, this is crazy. Santa Claus. Just like a dumb thumbnail of me like, I decided to be Santa for a day. It's all of it. But yeah, so uh, yeah, that's happening. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I started, I started making more skits too. I don't know if uh, any of you have seen, uh, seen those. I made one, uh, released one a few days ago. And, uh, that's what see, people seem to like more is when I do skits, it gets more traction, not on YouTube, but like on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and that's my thinking, right? Like in the reality, like who's going to want to listen to like a, a podcast of a guy they don't know. Well, I feel like I'm interesting enough where like people enjoy the content, but to really get people on board to subscribe, you know, to for the people to give me a chance, right? And listen enough to, to form an opinion. Like you kind of need traction to begin with, I think for podcasts in general, right? Cause it is very oversaturated out there. All right, so I guess the logic is like, oh, look at this idiot making a funny voice in front of a green screen. I bet he has a lot of poignant things to say on politics and stuff. Let's check out his podcast. That's my strategy. But uh, speaking of, uh, of politics, uh, I don't know if you if you guys have seen Trump's uh, idea on how to cure coronavirus, which is uh, ultra powerful light and injecting disinfectant into people's lungs. It's brilliant stuff. He figured it out, right? He's uh, no matter what it is, no matter what aspect of life there is. Trump has got a solution. How crazy is that? Really impressive. Right? Maybe he's going to take over NASA. Right? Put twice as more rockets. Put twice as more engines on the rockets. They're going to go twice as fast and twice as far. You're welcome. Right? Just everywhere. So light, 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 and disinfected is his solution. For those of you who haven't seen the video, here's a here's the clip for context. So supposing we hit the body with a tremendous, uh, whether it's ultraviolet or just very powerful light, and I think you said that hasn't been checked, but you're going to test it. And then I said, supposing you brought the light inside the body, you can, which you can do either through the skin or uh, in some other way. And I think you said you're going to test that, too. Sounds interesting. We'll right, folks, we'll right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute. Look at her body language. Her whole career is flashing through her eyes right now. One minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by And the dramatic zoom, like the slow zoom. I don't know if the cameraman did that on purpose. Was it the, the in editing they did that? But it's perfect. Right? She's like, ah, I should have taken theater instead. Injection inside or, or almost a cleaning. Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it would be interesting to check that. So that you're going to have to use medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me so we'll see but the whole concept of the light the way it kills it in one minute that's uh, that's pretty powerful i would like you to speak to the medical doctors to see if there's any way that you can apply light and heat to cure 
you know, that if you could. And maybe you can, maybe you can't. Again, I say maybe you can, maybe you can't. I'm not a doctor, but I'm like. I'll say this. It takes a lot of confidence to riff ideas on how to cure the coronavirus in front of like billions of people, right? This gets broadcast around the world. All right, to be like, yeah, I'm no doctor, but like, if what if we shoot ultra powerful light on the people or like shoot them up with Lysol? That could be a thing, right? I'm no doctor, you know, I'm just riffing here, but you're going to try it out, right? Like, and how like delusional is he where he thinks like he's going to come up with idea? with an idea of, of a cure on the spot. Like, I feel like in his mind, the doctor is just going to get up and she's going to be like, yes, yes, if we we put disinfectant on our hands and it kills the germs, so what if we, like, put it on the inside? Whoa, this dude right here figured it out. Trump is like, well, you know, I'm just riffing here but you know i'm uh i guess it just solved the global pandemic just just drink a bunch of lysol right i'm sure there are no side effects and it's gonna go straight to the source and kill the virus she's like this guy right a person that has a good, you know what? But sir, uh, you're the president. Deborah, have you ever heard of that? Uh, the uh, heat and the light relative to certain viruses, yes, but relative to this virus? Not as a treatment. I mean, certainly fever yeah. is a good thing when you have a fever. It helps your body respond. Mm -hmm. But not as I've not seen heat or light. I, I think it's a great thing to look Having to explain to the president of the United States live and trying to keep a straight face, hats off to her. Like, yeah, but you know, it can help in some ways, just not, not in this one, right? Because you can't really fully disagree, right? Because next thing you know, He's going to fire you and replace you with a guy that first ate the Tide Pod because he's, uh, he's on the same wavelength as Trump. Now they got to figure it out. I mean, you know. Okay. Respectfully, sir, you're the president, and people tuning into these briefings, they want to get information and guidance and want to know what to do. They're hey, not looking for Phil, rumors. Hey, I'm the president, and you're fake news. Oh, man, he's such a cartoon character. I love it. Like, it would be funny also if it wasn't, like, ultra sad that this this, is, this dude runs the country. Like, and he's suggesting for people to inject disinfectant. It kind of kills the theory of Illuminati a little bit. A lot of people believe this is, like, a global conspiracy. And obviously, the president of you know, the world's biggest economy, just one of the most powerful countries in the world. Obviously, he's going to be in cahoots with the Illuminati. And he's just like, we're just going to try and shooting a bunch of light. Right? What if we just inject Lysol, some disinfectant, just wash the insides? Pure craziness. Man, I love how he just dragged her into it. Because she's probably in the back. She wanted him to like... She can't fully disagree. He was, you know, he was like... Giving her his, uh, you know, his ideas. She's like, yeah, yeah, no, that's great. No, that's, uh, I'm going to look into it. And he just goes on live TV and he's like, she said she's going to look into it. And she's like, shit. As she was sitting there, her phone was probably vibrating in her pocket from all the... All over her friend, doctors and scientists, just writing LMAO and a bunch of like laughing and crying faces with a little skull in the end. Oh man. What if also like one day well, like we found out that Trump died because he just ate too much hair dye? Because he was like, well, if I eat it, then 
my hair would come out already colored. Right? Uh, what else happened? Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, uh, le- leaders trying to wing it, uh, the mayor of uh, uh, Vegas, uh, Carolyn Goodman, wants to reopen it. Right? One of her arguments was that it's very warm there. It's no good for the virus. So that's her it's her line of thinking. And honestly, I get her pressure in wanting to reopen Vegas because the whole city is based on taking people's money. Right? It's just a giant business, Vegas. Right? It's even like conveniently placed in the middle of a desert in case someone wins too much. Right? Suddenly they disappear. Right, so they got to stay open. Like, they they have no other way. Like, they're just like, what What else do they, they can they rely on? You know, like, all they got is casinos, Celine Dion, and just a bunch of magicians. Right? None of which are considered essential workers, so it's hitting them extra hard, I'm sure. Because nobody like, really lives there, even. Right? Like, no one, like, settles down in Vegas, just, like, lives a normal life. Right? No one's like, all right, it's, you know what? I'm getting older. It's time to settle down. I'm just going to move to Vegas, you know, marry a stripper. Right? Get married by a dude, right, who's, like, a bad Elvis impersonator. Hey, it's time. Right, someone retires and buys a small house in Vegas in front of like a giant neon sign. Right? It's crazy. Like like Vegas is just a giant circus. Like it's just this giant crazy place. And to open it in, in the middle of a pandemic is just pure madness. Like, you know, like, uh, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not the coronavirus, right? It doesn't abide by, by Vegas rules, you know? It's gonna, it's gonna leave Vegas. Right, I'm sure there's gonna be, if it, if it reopens, there's gonna be a lot of married men coming back home from Vegas and trying to convince their wives that their STD is like a new strain of the coronavirus. There's going to be a lot of that. What else happened? Oh, oh, the the mayor of Jap- one of the Japanese cities. I forgot which one. Uh, here, let me pull up the article. Yeah, so Japanese mayor says men should uh, grocery shop because women take longer. It's mayor of Osaka, Ichiro Matsui. Which is so hilarious. And I don't know, it's funny because like it's Japan for some reason it makes it like fun, like a funny story. But can you imagine like if Trump or Trudeau said that? That would be like picketing. In the streets. It's crazy. That's that sounds like super passive aggressive. You know, like I'm sure that dude like had a argument before going to work with his wife. Right? He's like, it took you two hours to last time to to buy groceries. Like, what is taking you so long? She's like, Well, I picked the right things. Whenever you go, just buy a bunch of dumb. Wrong shit, like chips and stuff, right? I actually buy the things that are necessary and it takes time, right? And he just like, he's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Drives to work. There's a bunch of cameras and microphones in front of him. And he's like, women take too long at the grocery store, right? 
Which if they make it so that only men would go grocery shopping, that's where you would definitely need 5G because it would just be all dudes calling their wives going, hey, is this the, the, the right brand of peas? It's just like, it's just peas, stupid. Just buy them. There would be a lot of that happening. And uh, finally, I'm going to end on this story. Uh, it looks like it's uh, just talking about political things, this episode. But uh, there was this video of um, Deputy Prime Minister uh, Christia Freeland. Uh, she was questioned uh, by one of the conservatives, I forgot his name, about um, Canada being aware of um, people traveling from uh, from China that might be infected with the coronavirus with the in the province that where it started the Wuhan Wuhan and so she's grilling about her uh, grilling her about that and he's asking for yes and no questions were they aware around this time period and the way she avoids the questions is one of the most frustrating things I've ever seen. I'm going to play the video here for context. It's so frustrating to watch. Here, it's four minutes. I can't even play the whole thing. I'm going to play like the first two minutes, but this is, this goes on for four minutes. To a yes or no question, the military intelligence warned of the deadly coronavirus in a briefing to the government in early January. Uh, yes or no, did the prime minister his office or any member of the cabinet see these briefings, yes or no? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Canada as a member of the Five Eyes, as a member of NATO, as a member of NORAD, a close intelligence partner with all of those allies, very much including the United States, is privy to a great deal of intelligence. Of course, the global pandemic is an issue which has concerned our intelligence agencies and those of our partners. So we have been in close communication with them. Well, member for Carleton. Yes or no question. There is not one yes or no in her answer. Went on for how long? For over 30 seconds, she answered yes or no question. Did any member of the cabinet see that intelligence from our military, yes or no? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. As I have said, Mr. Speaker, it, our intelligence sharing is very important. Our intelligence sharing with our allies during this global pandemic, which poses particularly security challenges, has been, I would say, very energetic. And we continue to work with The Honourable Member for Carleton important energetic it's pure dribble so this goes on for like four minutes she never answers one question and i never understood that with politicians like who are you fooling like it's just it's really frustrating like nobody is satisfied with these answers so you're like it's it's even worse i guess you don't want to incriminate yourself by saying you know a lie and then you get caught um, you know, you get caught lying, but like this, this is like the worst approach. It sounds so insane, right? Who, like who's gullible enough to like hear an answer like that and be like, ah, oh, all right. Okay. So it's important and energetic. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I can, uh, I can relate, relax. My mind is at peace now. That's craziness. I, I never got that. It's like the equivalent of like shaking a pair of keys when someone asks you an important question. Right? Like, uh, so over the years, there have been uh, a lot of uh, uh, steps that Canada took that made them arguably more reliant and overly dependent on China. With a crisis, is there anything that China plans to to... Is there anything that Canada plans to change? She's like, uh, hey, look at these, these keys. Shiny. Right? Look, at, look at it. Ah, look at it. Right? 
<laughs> What's the question? Just look at this kids. Crazy. Right? That's what it feels like. Or like, oh, with the recent oil crash, um, has Canada thought about taking any more considerable measures towards uh, green energy? She's like, hey. Oh, right? This is, ain't that crazy? Look at this. It's like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, politics. <laughs> Am I right? Ugh. This like sounds like some shit that Trudeau does all the time. He does it all. Like, he never answers any question. It's so frustrating. All right? Someone could be like, okay, so how many people died for this reason in the last month? Whatever. He would be like, well, uh, death is a, it's a very serious thing. It's very important. What is death really? What is life? You know, uh, what happens after we die? I don't know. No one knows. It was a subject of debate since uh, civilization started, really. Since, you know, we became sentient beings. We always wondered what about death. You know, death, death is definitely very important. And uh, I take it very seriously. So I'm like, all right, what time is it? Mm, time. Some say time is relative. You know, we're, but we're all uh, bound by time. You know, sure, we have seconds, you know, that turn into minutes, hours, days. But in reality, those are just arbitrary measurements that we created to navigate the to, to world better. Someone's like, all right, just say the word cheese. Can you say the word cheese? Well, that is a great word. It's a very important word as it uh, is a derivative uh, of milk, you know, of milk products, which uh, I must say, uh, relating to the farmers of Canada, is just a group of words that, are, that, uh, that is very important. And as everyone knows, I have been very supportive of farmers. So uh, that's it. Hmm. Never give a straight answer. I don't know. This whole thing, man, this whole, how, how all the politicians are reacting right now, it all makes me uneasy. All of it. I don't know. There's some, uh, a lot of, a lot of happening behind the scenes. Makes me uncomfortable. Right? A lot of politicians are taking advantage of this crisis. That's for sure. Right? They're hiding stuff. A lot of people are overstepping their powers, you know, to take away people's freedoms. It's terrible. And I thought if you're going to do it, at least, like, add some, like, good ones that we can all enjoy. Right? Because there are some positive freedom restrictions that you can take to balance out the whole thing. I thought of a few here. I'm going to share them. Uh, number one. Uh, having your sound on uh, during a text conversation in public, five years of jail time. That sounds right. Oh, and if you like, if your phone makes like the t -t 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 sounds when you type, 20 years. Right? Uh, oh, if you say, I don't know, what are you having to your friend when the waiter comes up to take your order? Mm, one year jail time. Be more prepared next time. Right? Uh, oh, the people that stop in front of an entranceway, uh, like in front of an entrance because they're checking their phone and there's a pileup of people behind them. Life in prison. You know, we don't need them. They're slowing down society. Uh, oh, if you excitedly say, I don't have coronavirus as a joke, whenever you sneeze or cough, a hundred dollar fine. Like it's fine, but you know, there's too much of that happening. We need to reduce the numbers. And, uh, oh, finally, if, uh, if you say, um, 
uh, bro and carbs in the same sentence, and it's not ironic, electric chair. It's a bit much. It's a bit much, I agree. But we kind of have to bring down global IQ a little bit. Because look at what look at what's happening around the world, right? Uh, so on that note, I think uh, I think that's it for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, like always, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.